What's better than one deformed tortoise? Two deformed tortoises. <laughs> I thought I would be okay talking about this because like I've talked about it like on Instagram and stuff and I like finally was just getting to be at peace with it, but um yeah, I guess I'm still not over it. So yeah. We've been gone for like four months, but we are back. Uh, we were having some major computer problems. Um, nothing will discourage you like uh, having to take your computer to the Apple store like seven times in a week. So we bought another computer that we literally couldn't figure out how to use. It was like a gaming computer, an HP that his friend recommended that was like custom made, super expensive. We couldn't even get the videos on that computer. So then we had to go buy a new computer, which is actually fabulous. Um, and we will be posting more. We also somehow picked up a stalker. So that's definitely uh, discouraging and makes you not want to post. Uh, but everything is kind of settling down now. We've been super busy with the rescue. We got a bunch of new animals in. Some are permanent residents. Some are just uh, being rehabbed right now that will eventually be rehomed. So I guess we'll just take you through everything. So this is Olaf. Hi, Olaf. You're showing his butt. Well, I can't really make him turn around. I don't know Come here. how I make him turn around. Come, here. Come on. <laughs> there you go. No, well, either way, that's Olaf. Uh, can't really get him to turn around exactly, but uh, so he is a big, beautiful bird. He is much bigger than our other cockatoos, you might notice. And uh, he is, what is he, 31 years old? He's 31 years 31 old. 31 years and old. And he is an umbrella cockatoo. Yeah. Now, he was an owner surrender to the rescue. Um, she loved him very much, but she has five, I think five other macaws, lots of big birds, and cockatoos need a lot of attention. So she loved this bird. She actually slept in bed with him for 10 years, but she just felt like he wasn't getting enough attention. Uh, so she reached out to Hello. us and she really wanted him to stay with us as a permanent Hello. resident. Um, we can't always do that. So if you reach out and want us to keep your animal, no promises because we definitely have a lot of animals, but yeah. he's actually perfect. And for an umbrella cockatoo, he's pretty quiet. So we, uh, we got really lucky with him. Yeah. And he knows, uh, quite a few words. Uh, he says here, kitty, kitty. He goes <laughs> meow. He says, bye bye. Bye bye. And he says, hello. He says, um, cracker. <laughs> Cracker. That's his favorite thing. That's his favorite cracker. thing. And he knows. He knows it means food. So like if you have food, he comes over, he's like, cracker. Um, really he cute. also says, hey, baby girl. <laughs> um, well, the story is for 31 years, um, his mom actually thought he was a female. But when we took him to the vet and got blood work done, he came back male. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now we know a little more about him. But um, yeah, he's a he's a total sweetheart, and he's huge, like compared to the other birds. Like we should grab Chloe real quick and show their sizes. Come here, Chloe. Yeah. So look at them side by side there. Chloe's a little scared because he's so big. There we go. Yeah. So you can actually kind of see right there. So he's big. I mean, he's a big umbrella. And buddy. And Hi, Olaf. He's being shy now. Usually yeah. he's very talkative. And, you know, again, for an umbrella, he is pretty quiet, surprisingly. Pretty quiet. He's still loud. Yeah. He's, he's still relatively. the loudest bird we have. <laughs> relatively speaking. <laughs> yeah, for, for an umbrella. For his species, he's relatively quiet. So, Tiki the leopard gecko that we were posting updates on, um, he actually went to his new home. We were starting to film a YouTube video two weeks ago. So I kind of did the intro right before he went to his new home where like I showed uh, everybody what he looked like and his progress and improvement. But then we got sidetracked. We were super busy. We were picking up two animals that came from North Carolina that day. So we just didn't uh, end up filming that entire video. So I guess I'll just add the clip in here. So here is Tiki the leopard gecko. As you can see, he looks like a totally different animal. He made a full recovery. This eye was unable to be saved. Uh, this eye we were able to be able to save. He had to have multiple surgeries to have his eye cleared out. He had so much bacteria and stuff shed in there. He was dewormed a bunch of times. He's finally putting on weight. So this is like five months of TLC, lots of love, special care. 
and he's actually going to his new home today. Um, so thank you so much to Jessica's animal friends for taking him. Um, he is going to be a special needs leopard gecko. He's gonna need care. He's gonna need his eyes clean out, possibly even eye drops in the future. So at least my nerves are calm knowing that, you know, he's going to Jessica who has so many leopard geckos and she specializes in special needs reptiles. So we can't thank her enough. Make sure you check her out. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be getting some more Tiki updates there, but I guess we should uh, say goodbye and go pack this guy up. We're gonna miss him. And then we'll show you one of the new iguanas that we got. This, right here is Jax, the rhino iguana. Beautiful rhino iguana. And so we actually just got uh, two rhino iguanas into the rescue. The other one is actually quite a bit larger than this one, but very, very not friendly. <laughs> not friendly. Um, even though this guy, he's, he's on the run right now. But, uh, hey buddy. So, a rescue in North down. Carolina actually reached out to us and um, had two rhino iguanas that were looking for a home uh, that they didn't want them to go to someone who was going to breed them. Totally understandable. I don't want any of my animals that get rehomed to be bred either. So, we are honored that they trusted us and we had a transport van who actually helped us transport Max that cockatoo that we rescued from the pet store in New York to Florida. So they transported um, the iguanas for us for, to from North Carolina to Florida. Rhino iguanas are a really, really cool species of iguana and Gabby has always wanted to be able to interact with one. I mean, we have at friends' houses before, but now that we have some here that we're gonna be able to hang out with and really get to know, it's really exciting. So now we have three rhino iguanas. We do have Quasi. We've had Quasi for about a year and a half. He actually just had to have surgery, poor Quasi. Uh, he had a hemipene that prolapsed and wouldn't go back in because, you know, he is kind of deformed. He has really bad scoliosis, so we just had that removed. But either way, we can't really handle Quasi because he's so deformed, he gets stressed out, then he like flips himself over. So to be able to have at least one rhino iguana that I'm able to cuddle with and interact with and hold and snuggle, I'm really happy. And hopefully he will be used uh, as an educational animal too. So Chris is always giving me a hard time for the amount of birds that I want and the birds that we end up keeping. He's just as bad as I am because we got this little guy into the rescue and he was supposed to be rehomed and Chris fell in love. So here he is. Well, you might. I know, he's gonna you bite might, me. He might try to bite he's you. He's gonna bite me. All right, so Don't. this little guy. Oh. <laughs> He's doing a happy dance. Oh yeah. Happy boy. Look at that happy boy. Rocky. He's terrifying. <laughs> He's doing his little happy dance. He Look at him. He loves Chris. He does love Chris. And he is a really cute bird. He just hates women. Oh, All now women. he wants to bite you. Yeah. Any man, doesn't matter who you are, you could walk up to him, pet him on the head, he'll step right up. Any woman, he will fly at you and attack you. He is adorable. So Rocky here is a Senegal parrot, and um, he's really, really cute. He's very talkative. Uh, he says, um, well, hi, Rocky. he says, hi, Rocky. He goes, Rocky, hi, Rocky. <gasps> hi, he's Rocky. So happy. Look at his little happy dance. <laughs> he goes, uh, pretty bird. Well, actually, he sounds like, he's not going to do it right now, but he goes, pretty bird. He sounds like a robot. Yeah, it's really cute. And then he whistles. Yeah. And my favorite thing is when Chris walks away, he says, come here. Come here. <laughs> come here. Come here. <laughs> come here. Come here. He's very, very cute. So, um, yeah, we got him in the rescue. And, uh, yeah, he's just, he's super cute and adorable. Here, I'll, Always I'll, does. I'll, I'll, yeah. Ah! Oh, yeah. Sorry. Well, he'll also bite me. Because if Gabby's too close too, that's Gabby the other one too. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Don't bite me. Oh, look at, look at him. He sorry, wants, he wants sorry. to get oh, he you. Wants to fly at me. There he is. There he is. He's so cute. Hey, buddy. So the problem with him though is that like right now he's trying to rub his cloaca on me. And so basically he's trying to have sex with my hand. Hi. And then bites me. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We don't want to encourage that. So, um, as cute as he is, as much as I love him, and I pet him on top of his head. Oh, you don't want to do it right now. Um, I'm going to go put him on the perch. And Oh, there's that too. I'm going to go put him on the perch, and uh, we'll let him hang out there. So if you saw our last live video, you'd see the process of our newest rescue because we got a call during the live. We got a call and somebody found a tortoise in their yard and we asked them to send a photo. They texted it over and it was this guy. A very deformed silicata tortoise. He looks kind of normal from that angle. Well, not if you look at him like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is a very poorly deformed sulcata tortoise. Uh, also called an African spur thigh, right? And um, so these are very, very common in the pet trade, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because these things get massive. This guy is, well, his very malformed shell should be pretty obvious. It should be a dome, you know? But you'll see a lot of these um, very commonly in the pet trade where people get them as very small babies, uh, relatively cheaply, and then they don't take good care of them. They often do become deformed um, or they just break out and escape, right? You can't really even see it, but his spine goes like this, like his whole shell is concave. Yeah. And he also has a prolapse, which is yeah. going to cost us probably at least a thousand dollars to fix. <laughs> yeah. So he has a prolapsed um, business going on there. I'm going to say it in a nice way, but uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So he's got a lot of issues. Um, now we did, uh, we were able to raise some funds for him, and thank you so much to uh, my friend Jeff Schmidt. He donated quite a bit of money to help poor little Theodore right here. So, um, yeah, so we've got him, and he's doing pretty good. You know, all things considered, he's doing great. Yeah, he really is, and, and even his uh, man business is looking pretty healthy. It probably will have to be amputated eventually. The vet did put him under anesthesia and tried to stitch it, but sulcatas are so strong, he just popped the stitch. Um, so we don't want this to become necrotic and since he's dragging it on the floor, we are going to have to amputate it, which brings us back to the point we are a nonprofit. We do take a lot of these rescued animals in. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys, so we'll link uh, in the description box how you can donate to help for his care. We named him Theodore. He will either be a permanent resident or he'll end up going to Jeff because I know Jeff expressed interest in wanting to adopt him. So. Yeah. All right, well, speaking of uh, deformed tortoises, let's introduce you guys to Jasmine. So this is Jasmine. I'm going to block your face, Gabby, so That's the okay. camera can focus. She's prettier than me anyway. <laughs> so she is a leopard tortoise who also is very deformed. That's not normal. It's supposed to be this nice domed shell right here. So there's really bad pyramiding and a deformed spine right there too. Um, and you know, this is this uh, metabolic bone disease and tortoises is very, very common and you see a lot of them with this really bad pyramiding and then also the spinal deformity too. Yeah, so we actually got her for this, from the South Florida Wildlife Center. Um, I don't know the full story. I think somebody found her walking around, brought her, they couldn't find um, an owner. Same thing that happened with Theodora and they ended up contacting us and I've always wanted a leopard tortoise. She's really sweet. I love her. Show like this split in her like, can you see? Yeah, so she has like a huge split here. And guys, this isn't something that happens overnight. This doesn't even happen in a few months or a year. This is years of improper care, years of improper diet, improper lighting. Uh, this is, you have to try really hard to mess an animal up this bad. That's just, you know, it is what it or is. Or not try at all. <laughs> not try to care for it properly at all. Yeah. But she's doing better. Um, the thing with both these tortoises though, guys, is that uh, although they're doing as good as they can be, all things considered, uh, these are ailments that are probably never gonna go away. I mean, this it's the spine, you know? So even with the best care going forward, uh, this is probably as good as it's gonna get, most likely. So different tortoises also have different diets. And so this leopard tortoise here is a grassland species, so they're gonna eat more grass. So when we put their diets out, we do have to vary what we're gonna feed them depending upon the species. You can't just do like, turtle food. You got to know what kind of animal and do your homework and know what they naturally eat and kind of mimic their wild diet the best that you can. Yeah. And some, some tortoises, <laughs> Theodore is stepping on my toes right now. Some tortoises do better in like a wetter climate. Like the, um, the redfoot tortoises are from the rainforest, so they can handle that. But with her and with the sulcata, when it rains, we bring them inside, especially because they're deformed. And if it gets cold at all, we, uh, we bring them both inside too, just because like they are special needs and we do really want to make sure we give them the best life possible. Switching gears a little bit, this has been like a happy video, I would say. Uh, I'm just going to touch upon it really quickly because I don't even know if I could, I don't even think I can talk about it without crying. I can't. <laughs> yeah. So we had uh, one of our animals pass away that we've had for a very, very long time, and that was Lucky. If uh, you guys remember, Lucky is a... Uh, a conure that we've had for how long? Like six years. Six years. Um, so he did sadly pass away and it was very sudden. Um, that's often what happens with birds though, is they give you no signs. Uh, as far as we know, he was, he was doing great. He was perfectly healthy as far as we could tell. And then just one day he died. 
And uh, so that often does happen with birds because in the wild, if a bird shows any sign of injury or sickness, uh, they get eaten by a predator, you know, they get singled out. So that's why birds will often hide any of these kind of things. And then by the time you realize anything is wrong, it's too late. So in this case, um, Gabby found him, you know, she went to check on him in the morning and feed everybody. Uh, he was on the bottom of the cage, not doing well, and she rushed him to the emergency vet as quickly as possible at the first sign of anything wrong with him, and he didn't make it. Within 15 minutes. I thought I would be okay talking about this, because, like, I've talked about it, like, on Instagram and stuff, and I, like, finally was just getting to be at peace with it, but, um, yeah, I guess I'm still not over it, so. Yeah, yeah so... That the was thing very that sad. Does make me feel a little bit better is we did do an necropsy, which is where they look at all the organs, and um, he had like abnormal spots on his liver and spleen. And if you guys remember when we first got lucky, he was completely black. His feathers were all black, which is a sign of um, liver liver disease. Uh, but we did blood work, and you know he seemed okay. But there are some things that blood work won't tell you all the time, and it was just really un unexpected. It's not easy to lose an animal, but especially when it's so unexpected it was horrible um so we've really been keeping an eye on blue which was his mate and she's actually doing better than i thought she would be doing so that's good but um i mean obviously i'm still messed up about it but i was really messed up for a few weeks this, he probably passed like a month and a half ago and for like two weeks i didn't even leave the house because i was just like a crazy person just checking on all the birds just like paranoid that my birds are gonna drop dead and then because lucky was in a cage with blue and because blue has so many health issues my mind is obviously going to the worst place like maybe she has something that's contagious and no vet can tell me what she has after years of having blue and going to four different vets and spending all this money on disease testing and and blood work and x-rays no one can tell me what's wrong with her and she's skinny and has tremors so immediately i'm like she she gave him something and then i'm like worried about all the birds but we've spoken to a lot of uh different avian specialists and veterinarians and my mind is at peace that this just kind of happens with birds sometimes, unfortunately, you know, no matter how good of a life and how good the diet is, um, sometimes it just happens and that's the sucky part about owning exotics, but yeah. So switching gears again <laughs> from sad to very happy, uh, Chris surprised me and we got an animal that I have been talking about forever. <laughs> Yeah, so we have a uh, new member of the family, a new armored member of the family named Rambo, and uh, let's uh, let's pull him out and show everybody. You're probably going to be able to see him for like five seconds, and then this thing is going to take off. Yeah. He's like one of those wind-up machines that you just crank and you put down and it runs, that's Yeah, it. that's, I mean, I, I always say like, Gabby, it always makes fun of me the way I describe it. I'm like, they're, they're, they're the kind of animal that you put them down and they just go. They, they don't, just go. <laughs> they just go. They don't know where they're going. They have no plan whatsoever. They just run. And that's that's all they do. Okay? So let's try to show him. Okay. Hold him closer. <laughs> there he is. So Rambo is a screaming hairy armadillo. Look at him. He is so stinking cute. And if you're wondering why they're called Screaming Hairy Armadillos, we'll insert the video here. Now, uh, yeah, so he's a screaming hairy armadillo, and these guys are native to South America. And as their name implies, they are hairy, and they scream very loudly, as you just saw in that video. And they are super cute and adorable, and he's about, uh, what is he, seven months old? Seven months old. He's yeah. a little baby. He's he just a little get baby. Bigger. Look at him. <laughs> he's so cute. Oh, my. Can you see how hairy he is on video? Like, turn him to the side. He's hairy. Look at his little hair. Oh, Oop. sorry. I Oop. offended him. So his nails aren't sharp and he doesn't bite, but his nails are like so strong, they still cut you. He's not mean. He just, like Chris said, he just goes. Yeah, he, he just, just tries goes. to run. He doesn't know where he's going, but he just, he's on a mission. So why don't you tell everybody about your armadillo obsession? Well, I've always loved armadillos and uh, I don't know. I just, I think they're super cute. I love, I oh, love armadillos. Oh. And then once I got, he loves her. and once I got humped by Brillo, that just kind of sealed the deal for me. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna. He's just, he wants to go. Yep. Yep, he, uh, he wants to leave. Okay. Bye. Look at him. He's just crawling across her back. Where are you going? You going down? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So obviously we do a ton of rescue work. Most of our animals are rescues. Rambo's not 
a rescue. It's an animal that I've wanted for a long time. We would like to use him for outreach. I oh, he's gonna. He's gone. He's dead. <laughs> oh my God, he's so cute. Oh, he's in a ball. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Are you see, show, show, show him like that. Show him like that. He's doing his best Brillo impersonation. Look at that tail. I know, right? <laughs> okay, so bye. Go explore. Go explore. He just runs around the house. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, he's not a rescue. Um, we got him from Steven at the Extreme Wildlife Foundation, which we went to in our last video. It was amazing. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. Really yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. So just to kind of um, clarify that point, you know, we almost every animal that you see at our house is a rescue, but there are some animals that we want to have and we want to interact with and we want to use him for education too. We want to use him for shows and we bring him to schools and things like that. So that's why we wanted to get him. And um, I guess I'm explaining it kind of awkwardly because people hate on you for that. And uh, it gets a little crazy. It's like, yeah. so be so if someone who doesn't rescue animals buys an animal, nobody cares. But if you do rescue animals and then you pay for an animal, suddenly you're the devil, right? And it's like, it makes well, no sense. I'm at the vet but, every single day with animals that aren't mine, using donations for dying animals. And I'm allowed to have an animal that I want to have. And before we actually made the nonprofit, we've been rescuing animals for years. I paid for everything. So because I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of my own money on saving animals that aren't mine, I'm not allowed to get one that I want. Right, so don't even try to come for us because yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> but we just had to clarify that just because people get really worried about this topic, you know? And so that's why we do like to be very clear about that one. That, you know, Rambo, uh, he's part of the family, but he's not part of the rescue. Right. And just to be transparent, since we're talking about it, we are in the process of trying to buy a house. We are right there, guys. We are so close. We are actively looking at houses, trying to find the perfect property to start our sanctuary. <laughs> but I also want animals where people can come visit and do interactions with. So. I'm definitely gonna buy a munchak deer. I'm definitely gonna buy an African crested porcupine because animals like Quasi that are rescued don't like interacting with people and Petrie, the rescued hornbill, you can't even touch him. So you gotta have some animals as well for people to come and uh, interact with too. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're taking the proper care of them. And you're qualified to be able to take care of those animals and interact with them. Um, you so think you're qualified to handle an armadillo? I do think I am. I think he scratched my face. He did. did. He? Ooh, Look. Ooh. So who's qualified now? <laughs> Do you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah. He he, yeah, yeah. I told mm -hmm. you his nails are just like he's so strong. They'll just scratch you off. You need some of that armadillo plating. <laughs> but uh, you know, we do we also like to make the point that exotic animals are not good pets, you know, and that's why we have an entire house full of exotic animals that are rescues that came from people who tried to have them as pets and, you know, for various reasons it did not work out. Uh, we are very obviously experienced in working with exotic wildlife and so that's why we can provide for Rambo and have a really good home, but by no means do we recommend that animal for anybody. Also, we do have a permit to be able to own that animal and he was born in captivity. This wasn't an animal that they just stole out of South America. His parents were captive bred, you know, these animals are uh, produced in captivity for education, for zoos, for things like that. So, yeah. All right, guys. So we are back. Um, if you want us to continue posting, help us out. Like, share, leave a comment. Just anything to boost our views because our views are really low and that is definitely discouraging. But we do enjoy making contact content for you guys. We definitely enjoy all the animals and you know sharing our lives and we hope that you guys love the animals too. But we are determined we will be back. We will be posting more videos, especially now that we have an amazing, super fast computer. So thanks again for watching. Let us know what your favorite animal is, and we will see you on the next one.